Hello everyone, today we are reacting to Scorpius Rex vs Indoraptor um, Battle Face Off and Death Analysis by Goji Center. Um, I am real. I haven't really watched, uh, I haven't, I'm not really caught up on, uh, um, Camp, Creta Camp Cretaceous, so, like, Scorpius Rex is pretty unfamiliar to me. On the other hand, I know quite a bit about the Indoraptor, but, whatever, let's just, let's dive right into it. Welcome back to the Killing Arena. Today we will match two of the most ferocious death machines ever seen in Jurassic World. One being the very first hybrid ever created. A dinosaur with a mind so unstable that it will disregard its own well-being to kill. The Scorpius Rex. The other, a weapon of the future made from pieces yeah. of the past. With a mind so sick that it finds pleasure in ending anything with a pulse. Yeah. The Indoraptor. In this video, we will find out what would happen if both of these hybrids run into each other and decide that one of them must die. We will discuss their intelligence, armor, strengths, and weaknesses. And I'm not really going to show an opinion because, like I said, I'm unfamiliar with. I'm not familiar with uh, Scorpius Rex. So. This battle will be bloody. Hybrid oh, ha, ha. versus hybrid. Killer yeah. versus killer. So stay with us to the end as we reveal who is the ultimate dinosaur butcher. Let's go. Before we enter the analysis ah, platform, we gotta have let's first take a look at both of these animals' oh, no, dimensions. No, no. The Scorpius Rex was confirmed to be the very first hybrid in the Jurassic World franchise. The fully grown Scorpius Rex seen in the Netflix show Camp Cretaceous was approximately 11 to 12 feet in height and oh. up to 26.25 feet in length. This theropod hybrid was very agile, fast, and light for its size. Some notable features are its grotesque and etched appearance, a byproduct of being the very first hybrid ever built. On the other hand, yeah, it kind of looks like the Indominus and the Indoraptor combined. Predator, the Indoraptor, I'm sorry, so she. named after the Indominus Rex, had a long, slender, and stealthy build, measuring up to 10 feet in height while standing upright, and up to 24 feet in length. This dinosaur was slightly smaller than the Scorpius Rex. Its posture was also very different, as it was shown that this animal preferred to walk on all fours. Now that we are acquainted with the physical shape and dimensions of our contestants, let's enter the analysis platform. Durability. All right. Both of these hybrids were seen in combat on screen for some time, meaning that their corporal features could handle some damage. But who is more durable? The Scorpius Rex was the very first hybrid ever created by Dr. Wu, meaning that its physical features were not as perfect as the next hybrid Rex or right. any other secret creations. This dinosaur was able to withstand several impacts from an identical opponent for some time. Its main durability attribute must have been found at its skeletal build. In this scene, we see how the Scorpius Rex manages to soak an impact from technically two directions, the opponent and the floor. The Indoraptor, not so much. After falling out of a window, the Indoraptor landed on the rooftop and remained there motionless for a few seconds, something that the Scorpius had no problem with. But what the Indoraptor Oof. does have is something found in later hybrid iterations bullet resistant skin oh yeah Note that this is not bulletproof skin this right. extremely thick leather proved to withstand bullets from a sig 522 rifle see how these bullets get absorbed and then fall off the side of this indoraptor later oh, on slashes and eye. bites from a velociraptor were not necessarily strong enough to pierce deep into its skin right. especially its reinforced back which is covered by armor plate like osteoderms Another indicator of how thick this skin was can be found in this scene when Ken Wheatley ignorantly shot two tranks at the Indoraptor. These really never pierced all the way as this mm -hmm. dinosaur most likely needed special trank darts to sedate it. More on this later. So, who takes the edge? One hybrid can withstand falls and strong impacts, the other with a very thick layer of skin that can withstand different types of trauma. Although different, both types of resistance are equally important in this battle, making this a draw in durability. <coughs> Sorry Intelligence. Ooh, who's smarter? The Scorpius Rex proved to be probably one of the most, if not the most intelligent dinosaur in Isla Nublar while it was alive. That is, when it decided to focus. This animal understood how to flank its prey from the sides or from above, quickly learning that this was the most effective way to kill prey. 
being the very first hybrid doesn't come without some challenges. Throughout its appearances in Camp Cretaceous, this animal displayed symptoms of neurological ailments that could be detrimental to its combat ability. This dinosaur showed signs of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, oh, or more right. commonly Just known like me. as ADHD. I mean, I have ADD, but shown whatever. In the constant hyper behavior and tendency to get distracted by sounds, other animals, and glowing objects. The fact that this dinosaur took down a Brachiosaurus says a lot about its lack of self-regard. Since Ooh. most large theropods would think twice before taking a risk to attack a dinosaur of this size. In addition to its hyperactivity, this animal was most likely bipolar, docile oh. on some occasions, oh. and then going berserk in an instant. This unpredictable aggressive behavior could probably be useful in this coming battle. Oh yeah, the definitely. The Indoraptor, on the other hand, was also extremely intelligent. Yeah, inheriting the traits I remember of that. Velociraptors and the Indominus Rex, which were perhaps the most intelligent dinosaurs in this franchise. Mm -hmm. This animal was an extremely fast learner, problem solver, trickster, yep. capable of opening doors and retaining memories. Let's go <laughs> back to this scene mentioned earlier. Note that while this Indoraptor was kept in captivity, this yeah. animal had to be tranked several times. Three darts were necessary, special darts which could pierce its skin. Once the Indoraptor knew that they were trying to trank him, he quickly pretended to be asleep, mm -hmm. probably because it knew that one, these tranks suck, <laughs> and two, he only got shot twice. This oh, scene yeah. taught us even more about this raptor. Note how it used its tail as a distraction, but truth be told, he was just toying with Ken. This animal's brain is so advanced that it finds pleasure in the deceiving of this individual and the process of ending his life. A trait found yeah, in highly intelligent animals. Remember that this dinosaur was built to be a weapon of war. It was engineered to think strategically and be focused on the target and identify its weaknesses. Yeah, this I think the Indoraptor takes the dead. In comparison to the easily distracted Scorpius, Gives a clear edge to the Indoraptor in battle intelligence. Yep, I can go with that. Overall strength. <laughs> like I said, in the I'm Netflix series with Camp Cretaceous, we witnessed the Scorpius Rex carry out one of the most difficult feats for any theropod, taking down a fully grown Brachiosaurus by itself. Now, how is Damn. this possible for a dinosaur that is lighter built than, say, an Allosaurus? Yeah. Let's find out how this was possible in the first place. In order to take down a dinosaur of this size in such a fashion, the Scorpius Rex would have targeted the extremely thick oh, lateral yeah, just, muscles of yeah, this just, Brachiosaurus. Uh, take out the legs. This is no easy feat. Just, Cutting through this dense yeah. muscular tissue in such a short amount of time requires immense amounts of strength. But how is this possible with these scrawny arms and legs? The answer would have to be fast twitch muscles. These types of muscle fibers allow the animal to inflict wounds and other types of damage similar to that of a large dinosaur. Which other dinosaur took sauropods down? Indominus. The Indominus Rex. Yep. Being able to accomplish such feats makes this dinosaur paranormally strong for its size. The Indoraptor was also a strong animal for its size. Uh -huh. Take a look at how this animal was able to pick itself up using a metal rod as its only means of support. Note that this is mostly thanks to its superior grip strength. An indicator of whether this animal was stronger than the Scorpius was its purpose as a weapon. While it is true that this animal was strong in its own right, it is imperative to note that the main purpose of this animal was for war. More specifically, optimized for killing humans. If you know anything about predators of this size, it doesn't take too much strength to kill humans. Mm -hmm. Most of the efforts put into this animal were rather focused on this animal's weapons and intelligence, and not necessarily on corporal strength, but just the right amount of attributes to be an effective anti-personnel weapon. Another indicator that differentiates the two is how they fought against Blue. This raptor was almost ignored by the Scorpius pair, whereas the Indoraptor struggled more against Blue. This difference of strength and the almost paranormal okay. amount of force behind the Scorpius' <coughs> attack gives it the edge in overall strength. Agility. Oh, the I might do another Rex Roblox video in the future. Time time I don't know when. That it is capable of moving its unpleasant soul in ways most other dinosaurs can't. Mm -hmm. This is thanks to the dinosaur's elongated arms and ability to climb. This animal's leg anatomy allows it to catapult itself into the air at great heights. This clip shows that it can jump up to approximately 15 feet in the air. Damn. Probably a little higher. 
This is a pouncing ambusher, meaning that this animal's way of attacking prey is to jump in the air, splay its limbs wide, and enveloping its victim with a barrage of claw attacks. In addition to that, this animal can do 360s in a split second. Its longer limbs give it a wide range of motion, such as these lightning fast kicks. The Indoraptor is an animal that can make its way around close quarters as we saw it run through the Lockwood Manor like a rat through a maze. Yep. Let's not forget that this was a peculiar type of raptor, built much different than the Scorpius. The Scorpius Rex seems to be built better for faster and more catapulting maneuvers than its opponent, allowing it to change positions faster and making it better built for pouncing on prey thanks to those longer legs. This is a close one. But because the Scorpius Rex was shown to be able to move itself and its limbs faster in a horizontal axis, the Scorpius takes the edge when it comes to agility. Speed! Uh, oof, this will be a good one. The Scorpius Rex was a <coughs> hybrid that could move absurdly fast, capable of moving from one end of the park to the other in record time. By once again taking a look at its leg anatomy, we see that these limbs were built for speed. Each mm -hmm. individual stride I don't know how they split that body. Just look how thin they are. Oh my God. Its pouncing ability allowed it to cover more ground in less time as well. How does the Indoraptor compare? This animal, as we already know, will purposefully move on all fours when it wants. At full speed, however, it is said that this animal can reach speeds of up to 40 miles per hour. Damn. Although its legs are shorter than the Scorpius Rex, an extra set of limbs allow it to have more points of contact with the ground, giving it more forward thrust. This animal's mm -hmm. center of gravity is most likely located in a more inferior position than a regular raptor. This animal runs in a more animalistic or primal fashion, similar to Godzilla when oh, he went yes. berserk on Kong. Yes, I remember this that scene. This stealthy posture when running is another indicator of its primary purpose, Man, which Godzilla is to was chase scary down, in that hunt, scene. and kill military personnel. Knowing this and its fast speed on all fours gives the Indoraptor the edge when it comes to overall speed. Yeah, pretty close. Terrain adaptability. Hmm. Throughout this analysis, it has become clear that both of these animals are masters when it comes to locomotion. The key difference is what they are equipped with. In the Netflix series Camp Cretaceous, we were given the opportunity to see through the eyes of the Scorpius Rex. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, Immediately, he has thermal you will vision. Note that this dinosaur or was she. equipped with thermal vision, yeah, yeah. meaning it's that even in dark environments, this animal could detect an opponent at all times. This thermal vision is also the culprit when it comes to its tendency to get distracted, as it is attracted to almost anything that emits heat. The Indoraptor, on the other hand, is also equipped with special ways to locate an opponent. Two things. Number one, this animal is equipped with echolocation, capable of oh, directing yeah. a directed sonar pulse from its skull and detecting or visualizing an entire area based on its acoustic signals. Two, if that wasn't enough, this animal is also equipped with night vision. Let us remind you once again <laughs> that these capabilities were no accident, but rather imperative for a genetically weaponized hybrid. The Indoraptor was built to be an all-terrain hunter. And finally, it is safe yeah, to assume that war. even if this animal lost its eyes during combat, it would still be able to make its way through any obstacles thanks to echolocation, which is how several animals can make their way through darkness without seeing a thing. This capability of making its way through anything, along with its tactical build and abilities, gives the Indoraptor a critical edge when it comes to terrain adaptability. Oof. Now let's get to the fun stuff. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Bite this effectiveness. Bite effectiveness. Let's when go. When it comes to bite effectiveness in this battle, we will probably have to take more into account than just skill or bite force. Let's start with the Scorpius Rex. This All dinosaur right. wasn't just ugly just because. There's actually a real reason why. Seriously, we tried very hard not to roast this dinosaur, but now we kind of have to. Believe it or not, this dinosaur suffers from a condition known as brachycephaly. What the fuck is that? A condition that causes a skull deformity characterized by a shortened anteroposterior skull length and a widened diameter. Damn. A well-known animal that suffers from this are pugs. Uh -huh. This genetic flaw. I mean, pugs are adorable. This thing is ugly. Carnotaurus, who had a bite force of a mere 3,400 newtons. Kind of weak for an animal of this size. Yeah. The deformities do not end here. Apart from not having the requirements to support strong muscle attachment, this animal's teeth varied in size a little too much, meaning that not all the teeth would make contact with the Indoraptor when it bites down on it. The huh. Indoraptor wasn't perfect either. 
but it did have a skull that did support appropriate muscle attachments needed for a stronger bite. If having a head shaped like a T-Rex doesn't tell you anything, right. this might. Note that this dinosaur's teeth are spread apart, but <laughs> somehow easily cut through this dude's arm. How oh, yeah. brute force. That's right, ladies and gents. Although the teeth aided in the piercing, this animal's jaw clamped down with so much force that it was able to crush through bones and tissues. But whose bite will be the most effective against their opponent? Probably Given Indoraptor. That the Indoraptor skin is thick in the upper part of its body, this Scorpius Rex will find it more difficult to pierce. Whereas the Indoraptor's bite will probably find it easier to rip through the less armored foe. Both of these animals have a good bite, but one can pierce better. For this right. round, the Indoraptor takes the edge for bite effectiveness. All Auxiliary right. weaponry. Alright. So far, Indoraptor's Other winning. than a mouthful of teeth, Into both of these hybrids have the advantage. different types of weapons. Let's begin with the Scorpius Rex. By examining this animal's anatomy, we see that the Scorpius's legs have a wider range of motion than its opponent. Its arms can also extend outward in a considerable range. But what about those claws? In order to bring down all types of dinosaurs in Isla Nublar, these would have had to be made of a very strong material, capable of withstanding the immense pressure between the Rex's limb and the victim's flesh. Same will go for that deadly claw on each foot. But perhaps the most notable offensive attribute of the Scorpius is found here, the tail. These are covered in quills, which are venomous, courtesy venomous of the Scorpius quills? fish. Damn. In the real world, getting pierced by one of these will be extremely painful and cause other serious side effects, such as Didn't muscle Coyote twitching, fever, anxiety, Wait, no, that was a lionfish, my bad. confusion, and even paralysis or death if you're a smaller individual. But the Scorpius Rex's quills effect on dinosaurs was more on the neurological realm. Note how some dinosaurs would become agitated and acting abnormally aggressive, almost reckless. Ah, damn it, how will it. these affect the Indoraptor? Let's stream the Winter Olympics. Live no one on gives YouTube a shit. Universal with YouTube TV. Let's address something very important first. It's forward leaning posture which in this case would be beneficial for the Indoraptor. How? Note that this animal's thicker skin is located on its skull and upper part of its body. A whip of the Scorpius's tail would have to strike low in order for the quills to pierce an Indoraptor. These <laughs> yeah. quills are not likely to have the piercing power to penetrate the Indoraptor's armored and bullet-resistant upper body, making these almost ineffective unless one lucky quill managed to pierce its lower body. Mm -hmm. The Indoraptor now hits back with the sharpest weapon seen in any raptor in this franchise. These were oh, very yeah. similar to the Indorex's claws, made of fibers that could pierce bulletproof glass. This does not end here. This guy has a very interesting way to claw, or should we say, stab its victims. Oof. Given that these claws are also very pointy, the Indoraptor's method of clawing travels in a flat arc trajectory stabbing deep into the opponent's flesh and then pulling outward, cutting any muscle tissue or intestines. These two dinosaurs God had damn. similar foot claws and were both <laughs> built to rip and disembowel. But in this right. case, the Indoraptor's lower posture and less vulnerable striking areas give the Indoraptor the edge when it comes to the effectiveness of auxiliary yeah. weaponry. Alrighty, Before then. we reveal the winner, let's explore some last crucial details about these two hybrids. X-Factor! Previously, we discussed the Scorpius Rex's genetic flaw that inhibited the Scorpius from having a stronger bite. Yeah. This flaw doesn't just affect bite force, but also its stamina. Really? But how? Animals with brachycephalic syndrome tend to have less oxygen directed to the lungs. Oh. This genetic flaw shortened its skull, which means that any soft tissue inside its nasal cavity is now squeezed in a smaller space as these remain unchanged in size. What does this mean? congested airflow, which then leads to fatigue and shorter stamina. Mm -hmm. Not good in a fight. Knowing exactly. this, this dinosaur will now be forced to end this battle quickly, as mm -hmm. it is most likely aware of its own endurance limitations. The Indoraptor was a hybrid developed for tactical military use, built to hunt down and kill the most dangerous creature on Earth, humans. During yeah. the development of this dinosaur, all the engineered attributes were specialized to take out military personnel. God damn it. We're not doing this shit again, are we? Not other dinosaurs. But being <sighs> a weapon of war also comes with immunological perks. 
Dr. Wu spared no expense when it came to equipping this dinosaur inside and out. In war, a new weapon like this would most likely be targeted for capture, either alive or dead. Right. Meaning that this raptor had to be equipped with an immune system optimized to fight foreign substances, such as toxins, wound infections, and even sedatives. Yeah, the other side would want to track this thing and keep it, which is yeah. another reason why this dinosaur required three darts instead of two. We are now ready to reveal which of these hybrids is the deadliest. Oh, the oh let's Rex, go. With its unpredictable personality, takes the edge in agility and a critical edge in overall strength. The Indoraptor with its optimized combat attributes takes the edge in combat intelligence, speed, terrain compatibility, bite effectiveness, and auxiliary weapons. Both of these hybrids are equal when it comes to corporal resistance, each with their own ways of dealing with damage. Oh, all right, let's go. By compiling all of our data, we determined that the Indoraptor Ooh. would be the clear winner in this fight. I had the feeling. In a confrontation between these two hybrids, the Indoraptor's more strategic approach can be credited for the win. Mm -hmm. Being a weapon of war, this dinosaur would instinctively assess its opponent. Hold on, I have a question though. Like, uh, the Scorpius' um, uh, tail like has these poisonous quills. Like, let's say one lucky quill got, like, in a vulner vulnerable spot. Like, what do you be... Wait, no. Because the Indoraptor will be able... I'll just let him explain. Sizing up its own weapons against the opponent's weakness and strength. Things like its taller stature, its lack of thick armor, and its reckless behavior. And its easily distracted focus would be attributes that the Indoraptor could exploit. Yeah. Let's cross these one by one. As soon as these animals approach, the Scorpius Rex's taller stature in comparison to the Indoraptor only means that it can attack from a higher position, mm -hmm. only being able to strike the most protected areas of her opponent. And the Indoraptor knows this. This armored area would mitigate the damage caused by the Scorpius. Next up, we have the Rex's bad method of pouncing on a victim. Not that pouncing is bad, it's just that against the Indoraptor, pouncing with your arms and legs spread open leaves this soft, squishy belly exposed to the raptor's razor-sharp oh, weaponry. Oh, yeah. Again, yep. something the Indoraptor will counter with an upward lunging attack and aiming for its jugular or Ooh. intestine, ripping them out immediately. But what about those quills? We mentioned that in a yeah. battle, these would most likely not pierce the Indoraptor at all, given uh -huh. that during a fight, the Indoraptor's body is usually under this tail's range of motion. But on the off chance that the quills do pierce a more vulnerable area, this venom would now have to fight the Indo's advanced immune system, oh, yeah, which yeah, would yeah. quickly mitigate the neurological effects of the venom. If this thing did not immediately kill this girl, then it most likely would not affect an Indoraptor. But yet another reason why the Scorpius would have a harder time would be its tendency to get distracted a lot. Oh, the yeah, Indoraptor yeah. just so happens to enjoy this sort of thing by mm -hmm. manipulating surrounding elements or its like, own elongated smile, body like, to distract its well, opponents, who, by the way, was forced to execute fast and uncalculated maneuvers in a futile attempt to kill the Endoraptor more quickly because of its limited endurance. In conclusion, and after analyzing this battle from all angles, it was almost an unfair fight. Uh, yes, yeah. it would be entertaining, but the fact that this animal was a more refined hybrid than the Scorpius Rex mm -hmm. made it win the edge in most attributes. This hybrid's superior intelligence and its ability to scope out weaknesses won this battle. Do you agree with the outcome of this battle? Tell That's us sure why thing. or why not in the comments. For more fun face-off documentaries on your favorite dinosaurs and kaiju, make sure to give us a like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next battle. Alright, uh, that'll do it for this reaction, guys. People, seriously, like, comment, and subscribe to Goji Center. Like, not just me, to, but to Goji Center. Like, um, click... Like, I'll credit this video in the description. Just click the link. Go subscribe to him if you haven't already. I, mean, I already have, so I'm good. But yeah, this is very interesting. I would love to see a, a uh, battle a, a battle face-off of uh, Rodan versus Kamazots. Tell me if you agree with that. But uh, yeah, I am uh, signing off right now. Holy shit, I'm out of space. I'm low in space, and uh, yeah, later.